John Nepomucin. Uh, I think all of you know Bratislava well enough, right, Max? Like the Holy Trinity Church, where Quo Vadis is, where we used to have our catechism. And if you turn towards St. Michael's Gate, there is a little bridge, and on that little bridge, there are only two statues. On your right is St. Michael the Archangel, kind of the same that on the top of St. Michael's Tower and Gate. And on the left is St. John Nepomucene. He's a 14th century saint who, besides the usual priestly work, you know, prayers, masses, uh, confessions, he was a vicar, kind of a right-hand man to the uh, Archbishop of Prague, uh, who happened to be, have the same name, John of Jenstein, but he had also one very special role. He was a confessor of Czech Queen Sophia. We call, uh, we say, Jofia, but the English equivalent is Sophia. She was a wife of Wenceslas IV. Wenceslas IV did not enter into the Czech history as well or as magnificently as his father. His father was no one else but Charles IV or Charles the Great. So if you ever go to Prague, I'm sure some of you went there, one of the most beautiful bridges is Charles Bridge, exactly, named after the father of Wenceslaus IV. And right in the middle of the bridge, you will find a statue of John Nepomucene, and many people come there and they touch like this spot, so it really is very, very, uh, very polished. What happened? Uh, Wenceslas IV was a man who did not manage, did not want to be uh, faithful to his wife. And he had this wife, uh, wife of uh, loving other women. And trying to excuse his sins, he wanted to know what the sins of his wife were. Of course, you know, the best person to ask what my wife's sins are, are her confessor, who was John uh, Nepomucene. So first, uh, in a meeting, he offered him lots of money, kind of wanted to bribe him. John refused. So then he applied what many kings often do, violence and force. So he tortured him first by sort of trying, to, uh, we call it skripets, by uh, sort of pulling out his limbs. Then they used fire to burn his body. And finally, the threat that I will drown you if you don't reveal uh, the sins. And John, uh, by God's grace, uh, remained faithful to what we call seal of confession or sacramental seal. So they tied him up, and on March 20th, 1393, they threw him in the river Moldau, Vltava, and he died as a martyr. Few weeks later, they discovered his body, and you may imagine when the body is longer uh, in the water or anywhere else, goes through the process of decay. But one part of his body remained incorrupt the tongue. So if you ever go to the Cathedral of St. Vitus uh, near uh, the castle of Prague, you may find what we call the relics, the bones of St. John Nepomucene, but you may also venerate uh, his incorrupt tongue. So I mention this because today happens to be his feast day, and he's a patron not only of the Czech lands, but also of all surrounding countries that used to be part uh, of the Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire. And St. John Nepomucene is that simple encouragement for all of us, that whenever Max or myself or Raphael or any one of you go to confession, you know that I can reveal everything because the priest must not tell the president, must not tell the pope, must not tell anyone. If the priest would ever break the seal of confession, he is committing such a serious sin that is reserved to pope himself. That means he would have to receive an absolution. I have not heard that actually anyone would uh, try doing something like that.